The basic premise of a horizontal curve is to balance forces. As the belt goes around a horizontal curve, the belt tension tries to pull the belt to the inside of the curve. Uh, opposing forces are gravity and the friction factor between the belt and the idlers. So typically the idlers are banked or super elevated opposite the direction of the curve so that the belt is being pulled into the eilers as it's trying to be pulled off the structure. Gravity therefore tries to push the belt to the outside of the curve and we simply do the equations until the forces are balanced. There's um, various published uh, me methodologies for balancing equations but pretty simple it's just geometry, um, gravity, friction, and belt tensions. The whole secret of uh, the horizontal curve is um, getting the, the belt to, the belt will move back and forth as it, uh, based on load and belt tension. Um, and the secret to a properly designed horizontal curve is to keep the belt within the plus or minus window um, of lateral travel. Um, so the worst cases are going to be when the belt's empty and the tension is high, the belt's going to be tried to pull, be pulled to the inside of the curve uh, as you look at this picture. And when the belt's fully loaded, uh, gravity is going to try to push it to the outside or the low point in the structure, the outs in this case the outside of the curve. So the key to our uh, analysis here is this uh, diagram uh, at the bottom of the screen which shows uh, belt tension across the bottom. So we want to get make sure we have all the possible belt tensions that might occur in any particular uh, slice in this conveyor uh, from the low tension to the high tension, low tension at the left of the graph, high tension to the right of the graph. And we're going to do a full set of calculations across the full tension range for a loaded belt, which is the bottom line, and the empty belt, which is the top line. Once we, in this case, the uh, y-axis here is the uh, uh, belt fleet or belt wander side to side, or lateral movement. Uh, the plus numbers is the inside of the curve, the top of the chart, and the minus numbers is the outside of the curve, or the bottom of the chart. So we have a bottom line, which is a loaded belt, and an empty, line, uh, empty belt is a top line through a whole set of, of tensions. In this case, we've uh, assumed a uh, restraining roll is placed uh, to the uh, right side of this idler to the inside of the curve at 114 millimeters. So once the belt, belt reaches 114 millimeters, it hits the restraining roll, and at that point a restraining force is then calculated. You can see here the amount of uh, newtons in, in force between the uh, belt edge and the restraining roll. As with all of our modules and calculations, everything begins with belt analyst. The design of this conveyor must be completely done before we do the horizontal curve calculations must be completely done all tensions has to calculate it all the components must be sized and so belt analyst and a dynamic analyst if you have the dynamic analyst module all that work is done uh, as if the conveyor is straight once everything is selected then we come in and calculate how to bend the conveyor in this case we'll pick a uh, a location right here in this uh, flax section of this 3.4 uh, kilometer conveyor and we'll, uh, we'll simply bend, the, bend that section around a horizontal curve. So the first thing we want to do is go into the uh, profile of this curve and find out where the uh, horizontal curve section is going to be and in this case I'll just label it as HC so uh, in this case flight number 12 158 meters long right there in the middle of this uh, flat section uh, will we'll identify as a horizontal curve. Now, of course, the dimensions of that curve must be pulled off of a drawing. As far as the arc length, once the radius is determined, uh, then we can determine, come back and adjust these uh, flights in order to, uh, to uh, make sure the horizontal curve is in the right location. So the first thing we do once we once we start to do the horizontal curve calculations or before we start to do the horizontal curve calculations is we want to make sure we have all the tensions 
uh, calculated, all the possible tensions calculated. So to do that, we're going to do a, a load on and load off calculation from the edit menu uh, for the carry side. <clears throat> and uh, we'll simply uh, play this so you can see the, the material loading on and loading off the conveyors. What we're doing here is trying to collect all the information as far as what the belt tensions are going to be in that section of the conveyor. So right in here where the horizontal curve is located, we are collecting those tensions as we do a complete load on and load off cycle. So the purpose here is to try to look at all the potential loading conditions and make sure we have the uh, running, uh, stopping and starting tensions for all the potential conditions. Now the program is storing this information, it's storing this data for you, so you don't have to necessarily uh, worry about this. And, but it is a good practice to uh, um, to look at what these tensions are uh, throughout the uh, cycle. Make sure you understand what the highest tension and the lowest tension is in the section of the conveyor that you're looking at. Okay, so we've uh, completed the load on, load off cycle. We're going to stop this. We're going to run the horizontal curve add-on program. Um, you can have multiple flights in your horizontal curve, but we're going to say flight 12 is, uh, is the extent of our curve. We're going to create a new file. It's going to ask us for, uh, for a file name and we can uh, we can take the, the this one or we can uh, change that if we'd like. Now it's going to ask us if we'd like to use the tension data that was saved the last time we did the run on, uh, load on load off procedure, which is yes, we'd like to have the full tension range. Now the horizontal curve module will open up. So now um, the data from uh, belt analyst has been has been copied over to the horizontal curve module. Here's the, uh, the running tensions, uh, acceleration, empty belt, uh, fully loaded belt. So we have uh, low tension data for a fully loaded belt here uh, highlighted, and we have a high tension uh, belt tensions and an empty conveyor belt in this top box. If we look right below that, here's our um, our little. Uh, uh, belt diagram that shows us what's going on. We have the uh, lowest tension right here, 97.48 kilonewtons, represented right here at the loaded line. And uh, this is the um, acceleration deceleration number. The transient tensions is the, the far left hand side. 121 is the running tension on the loaded belt, which is that number right there. The uh, white tensions are the transients stopping and starting, and the gray areas is the running tensions between the lowest and highest running tensions. So uh, on the uh, empty belt, uh, 232 represents this tension uh, right here on the empty belt, and 249 represents this tension right here to the far right of the curve uh, on the empty belt. So a uh, full, full range of calculations are uh, produced. Um, the only ones that's shown here, as far as details is concerned, is 249 uh, with the empty belt, which is this point right here, which is uh, drifting uh, the full 75 meters that we've allowed and shows us a minus 26 newtons, which is right there on our bottom chart. And the other uh, bottom uh, low tension number, the 97.48, is our lowest tension that we have on a fully loaded belt, which is represented with this value right here on the chart, which is minus 22 degrees of uh, 22 millimeters of drift to the outside of the curve. So we've drifted full 75 millimeters allowed to the inside of the curve. We have restraining force and uh, we have the minus 22 millimeters of drift with the fully loaded belt to the inside of the curve. 
Um, if we if we look over here to the uh, right side of the screen, we have the uh, information for our idlers, uh, idler spacing, uh, uh, troughing angle, number of rolls, roll diameter. Uh, all this is brought over from belt analyst, but it can be modified at this point. Uh, so for instance, we can change to a 45 degree idler, which you can see has actually helped us. The belt doesn't move as far because of the 45 degree idler. We could also change the super elevation angle, say 10 degrees, or lower it to 6 degrees, and you see the chart changing as we make these changes. So um, we can also change the horizontal curve radius. Right now we're setting at 1500 meters. We could change that to uh, uh, 2000 meters. You see the belt with that and this particular configuration wouldn't move much at all from side to side. In this case, 1500 meters is a pretty good uh, radius. We have just the belt just barely touching the restraining rolls during a transient, in this case, startup condition. And very low restraining force, you say there, is 4.4 uh, newtons. Um, this friction factor is also important. Um, the lower the friction factor between the belt and the idlers, the more the belt will travel from side to side. The higher the friction factor, the less the belt will travel from side to side. We typically default with a number of 0.05. See the belt width, belt speed, belt weight, rating of the belt and modulus all comes from belt analyst. And you can see there's also a calculation over here to the right, which actually shows the belt tension uh, across the width of the belt from the inside of the curve to the outside of the curve. So we want to make sure we don't overstress the belt on the outside of the curve or go into compression on the inside of the curve. And you can see in this case, we have gone into compression a little bit, minus 4% on the inside of the curve. So we might want to actually increase the horizontal curve radius just a bit to uh, and find out what the radius would need to be to uh, prevent any compression on the inside of the curve. Compression would mean potential buckling of the belt on the inside of the curve. You see 2,000 meters gets us to the point where we're at zero tension on the inside of the curve. Okay, we can also uh, change the number of rolls. We can play around with the uh, idler configuration if we'd like um, to get us a, a more, um, more traction in the belt going around the curve. So at this point, we can um, modify pretty much whatever we want in order to uh, get a, the balance of forces that we're looking for to uh, keep the belt within the defined window, uh, the maximum dr drift range through the, uh, this particular horizontal curve. This then is done for each slice of the conveyor. Um, that slice can be a, a complete horizontal uh, curve. It can be a piece of a horizontal curve. Um, it also needs to be done on the carry side and the return side. You simply uh, go back to belt analyst. You can save this file, return to belt analyst. Uh, pick another location where there might be another curve, or perhaps you've pick uh, you've only picked half of the curve and you want to pick the other half, or we might want to go down to the uh, return side and uh, and pick the return side flight that corresponds with the with the corresponding carry side flight. Obviously, the the radius would have to be the same on on both carry and return. However, the super elevation angle could be could be different. Obviously, the idler configuration could be different.